I know it's the <clears throat> I know it's the uh, day after Halloween, but I'll give you a hol I'll give you a Halloween story that really happened to me. Uh, not really. Uh, it doesn't really pertain to Halloween, but it's it's in that category. This happened to me. This happened to me about uh, 30, 35, 35 years. Uh, say thirty four. I'm trying to remember. It, 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 I, I know it wasn't nineteen ninety yet. It was back in the late eighties. So it's about 33, 34 years ago. My uncle he bought uh, he bought 110 acres of land property down in McCreary County, Kentucky. That's spelled M C capital C R E A R Y. It's named after a Confederate soldier. Anyway, he buys 110 acres. And is right on, like I said, the Kentucky-Tennessee state line. Next county is Scott County, Tennessee. But anyway, this is the Kentucky. And he works uh, Chevrolet up here in Cincinnati. Anyway, he has the idea. He wants to build a real expensive home there. He's a big spender anyway. So he orders all this expensive, I think it's called red cedar wood. He, he orders all this expensive red cedar wood, and it is beautiful. He says, I need somebody. And he says, now, the good thing about this job he offered me, you could be working, you could be working another job. That's fine. He only wanted somebody at night. So you could have, you could have worked at Ford Motor Company. You could have worked anywhere. You could have had a regular job and still been a night watchman for him. And, you know, real nice hours. He didn't want someone during the day because that's when they was building the, building the house. He had somebody to build it for him because he was busy working at Chevrolet. But during the day, they would be building onto the house. And he told me, he said, uh, now once, once the frame is up and we can lock it up, we won't need you no more. I won't need you no more. But he asked me, he said, would you want us, there's a mobile home on that property. He says, I need somebody to stay there at night. He didn't say what time at night, just spend the night. He said, I need somebody to stay, spend the night and uh, keep an eye on the, my, uh, the wood over there until the house is, you know, keep the, keep it, keep an eye on the material. Because a truck is going to deliver it back here. Now, his driveway was like a half a mile long. Now, his driveway junctioned with a gravel road. Uh, and it hits in the middle of nowhere. At least three miles. More than that. It's, it's in the middle of nowhere. There's only one house at the other end of the gravel road. At the other end. But his driveway junctioned with that road. His driveway was gravel. Now, I guess the property used to be government. I don't know. But he bought it off another guy. And that guy kept the old government gate up. It still had the government gate. And my uncle liked that gate, so he kept it. Anyway, a long driveway, long straight driveway until you got to the mobile home, then it curved left, then it curved right back to where he's having the house built. But he asked me, he says, would you want to do it? Uh, he said, I'll give you, you know, I hesitated for a second He because I know where it's, I know where it's at. I've been over there myself. Uh, he said, I hesitate. He said, I'll give you $150 a week. Maybe 175. No labor at all. You don't have to do no labor. Just get over there and and spend a night. It was like two or three months I did this. Anyway, get over and spend a night. He said, "I'll give you a choice of a shotgun or a rifle." Because he said, "I want you to." He said, "I'm paying. I want you to do something for me." I said, "What's that?" He said, "If I can't." 
He's, he said, if you catch anybody on this property, and here's what he told me. I want you to tell them in these exact words. He said, I'm paying, I'm paying you to, to tell them in these exact words. Tell them to get the hell off the property. And he, he actually told me this. Uh, I don't want you to use on any other words. No. He says, "Have your rifle loaded. When they when they when they approach you, have your rifle loaded. Have your rifle loaded. I want you to tell them, get the hell off the property. This is private." He he told me. He said, "If you don't tell them that, he said I won't pay you." He said, oh, "You know how how would he know, right?" So okay, okay, I will. And I tell you what, now I would go over mom and dad's. And it was like an eight, nine mile ride from a mom and dad's. I took the bike. I didn't want to take the car. Because the car, you know, it just, I didn't want somebody to see me going in there. I didn't want to take the car. Uh, the car uh, draws too much attention. So I took the bike. I, even though I still had a flashlight, it's a lot dimmer than car's headlights. I just, I didn't want to draw attention to myself. It's creepy over there. Anyway, every night for, I don't know, two, two months, every night I had to walk this creepy gravel road. And to beat it all, there was an abandoned house on that road. Now, once I got off the main drag, you got onto the gravel road. Now, the now the, the rock, I, I didn't have a mountain bike. I had a road bike, a bicycle. And the gravel was too big for those wheels. So I had to walk it. His driveway had finer gravel, so I could ride the bike there. But I, I didn't. I just walked it. You know, I didn't want to fall off the bike and get hurt. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Had no phone. He did have a phone at the mobile home. I'll call it a trailer. It's what, 12 by 60? He had a phone. I had electric. I had a refrigerator. Plenty of food. He took, the, after about three or four days, he took the phone out. I never understood that. I get, you know, I, so I had no way to call for an emergency. If I got in trouble, I got in trouble. I don't know why he took the phone out, but he took the phone out. Because I would get over there and call my mom, and, you know, I made it. But, you know, for I don't know. I never understood that, why he took the phone out. But anyway, he did. But it kept electric. I had electric. I had the rifle in one of those closets in that mobile home. And when I'd get to the mobile home, I, I'd feel for the rifle. I was too scared to turn the flashlight on and see someone standing there. But I tell you what, getting to that property was the longest walk, gravel road, woods. It, we're in, you know, I'm in the mountains of Kentucky, middle of nowhere, by myself, being paid 150 a week. <laughs> Of course, I was 25 years old, <laughs> a little bit dumber then. <laughs> it was cre every night. Did I get used to it? The question you're asking, did I get used to it? Not really. It's just creepy. It's just a creepy, you know, no houses around. Nobody's got a porch light on. I've got a flashlight walking this creepy gravel road. Looking behind me, I think I hear something. <laughs> I mean, you know, money talks. <laughs> 150. One time, he, several times, he gave me 175. You know, for doing really doing nothing, no labor at all, just getting there and keeping an eye, sleeping. I slept. Always slept with a rifle. It's just creepy. I get over there on average 10:30, 11 o'clock at night. On average, ten. He, he didn't. He didn't stay the time. Just be there at night, and I was, you know, maybe a couple hours after dark. But I made it. And God, it just, it just creepy. It just. I had a radio, but I kept the radio low. I did hear something one night, 
opened the back door, loaded the rifle, and shot about four or five times up in the air. Yeah, it sounded like somebody was trying to break in on me to the back door. It was all locked, but when you're in the middle of nowhere. So I uh, opened the door, bravely opened the door. You could tell, it, uh, it, it must have been a deer or something with his antlers against the outside because it sounded like somebody was trying to come in on me. So I opened the door and quickly stuck the rifle out and shot three or four times. Pow, pow, pow. To, you know, <laughs> loud rifle. <laughs> pow, pow, pow. You know, let him know I was armed. Hey, but he gave me about three or four boxes of shells. You know, I could fight a small, fight a small battle, fight a small war. But anyway, every Friday, every Friday, he come down and hand me my money, 150, sometimes 170, whatever he felt like. You know, I didn't do no labor, so I didn't argue about the amount. But I did know it was 100, minimum 150. If he gave me 175, 150, I didn't. That's fine. I mean, no labor. You know, I just slept there and kept an eye on the place. So I, I never complained. No, not me. It was money. That was a creepy walk. Oh, yeah, back in the late 80s, I don't know, 88, 89, 33, 34 years ago. Sorry for this traffic noise. You know, would I do it now? Would I do it now? That's been 33, 34 years ago. But would I do it now? I don't know. Money talks. I don't know. It's a different time now. You know, the world's got more dangerous now. I don't know. Would I do the same job now? Well, it really wasn't a job, but just, you know, keep an eye on the place. Would I do it now? Whew. That was a creepy walk, folks. Get, I mean, it's creepy just staying there overnight. At least I was with, I had the rifle on me when I got there. Slept with the rifle loaded. Kept the safety on. But would I do it now? I don't know. But getting there without without a gun, walking without defense, no way to defend yourself. But of course that was back when the world was a little safer back then. But that was a creepy walk. God almighty, you get the... Goose, I had uh, just every night walking through the mountains, gravel road, being paid <laughs> to walk there, get there, spend a the night. I mean, he just, I've got goosebumps now. I think I did that like two months. Ugh.